here with the latest from EVGA, the RTX 2060 XE Ultra. This is one of the brand new NVIDIA GeForce RTX graphic cards that EVGA has to offer from their lineup of 2060 series cards. Of course, it has all the best that you would expect with the NVIDIA Touring uh, architecture has the real-time ray tracing for your in-game enjoyment you know you want those reflections you want that eye candy you want the powerful AI enhanced graphics in there uh, not just the physics that you get to enjoy out of an Nvidia card this one here is dual slot comes with an extension on it really to give you that additional cooling and I'll show you that more in detail uh, built from the ground up, BBGA says here, this one specifically with the hydrodynamic bearing uh, fans offer lower noise and longer lifespan. Well, I got to tell you, I like the most out of this that it comes overclocked out of the box with a boost clock of 1830 megahertz. That's really a big bonus here. You can tell that this card has already been pushed, uh, uh, not to the limits, but you know, high up there so that's why you need that additional cooling so you can see right here on this card as we scroll here across that aluminum heat sink is going from one end to the other it's got an eight pin power connector because again this is not the high end uh 20 uh series this is a 2060 so more of a mid-range um to high uh end it's not actually quite bad uh, when when i did benchmarks you're gonna see the results are quite impressive um, I like the embossed ease on there that are adding uh, to cutting down on the noise a little bit as well and um, the fans are very quiet. You can see also the uh, copper heat pipe going from one end to the other through those aluminum fins and like I said this has an extension. What do I mean by that? Well the card itself is actually a shorter card in length. You can see there the PCB is about three quarters of the length and then the rest of it is just an add-on. You can see that EVGA plate that they put on there just to hide the heat sink portion of it so it's not really a, a big card so thus you wouldn't think that this would need a lot of power now it ha does have two display ports one HDMI one DVI for your 4k uh, viewing pleasure and uh, well being only a 160 um, TDP uh, you know wattage card you're not really gonna get uh, too much um, you know compared to a 2080 for example it does have of course the 12 nanometer architecture, so the latest and greatest architecture using the GPU there, the TU-106. It does have a lot of shaders, uh, 1920 uh, of those CUDA cores supporting the latest technologies with your PCI Express slots and, and uh, DirectX 12, of course. Um, I like the GDDR6 type of memory. We got 6 gigs of that. Okay, so that uh, actually you can see there the GPU clock, memory clock, and the boost clock at the bottom. Um, the uh, bus width 192 bit and bandwidth is 336 GB per second. Again, like I said, this is not really an entry level. It's more of a higher end uh, of the of the realm of cards when when you compare it to other past generations. You're gonna see what I what I'm talking about. Um, I'm running this on a Ryzen 7 1800X at 4 gigahertz uh, on this board, as you can see here, with 16 gigs of memory. Okay, and uh, well, I've been upgrading the drivers because you know, uh, with new games coming out and trying to get that uh, DXR enabled and all this, I keep going back and forth to enable the drivers. So bear with me on that one. You're gonna see uh, different. Uh, uh, results here, but that's mostly because I'm using the latest and greatest NVIDIA drivers that I keep downloading and updating every two seconds as they come out. Now, when it comes to power usage on idle, it's about 11 watts, okay, uh, out of the 160 and up that it can really get to if you overclock it even further. Fan is really at idle, it's zero, right? It doesn't really turn on until it needs to. At full load, it kicked into about 20% that fan and the temperature rise up to 62 degrees Celsius right as opposed to on idle which was about 34 degrees Celsius not bad at all overclocking well there's a little bit more headroom that you can get out of it using the EVGA precision x1 software of course you download that for free from the EVGA site click on the scan and test button for it to actually accommodate the voltage and the frequencies for you now this is so that you can get that extra little bit of umph out of it for the memory like I did right here from 1750 megahertz up to 1904 megahertz okay not not the boost 
We're not overclocking the boost. The boost is pretty much where it's at, but you can manually adjust and uh, increase all of that if you want, right? The GPU clock, memory clock, boost clock even further than what it comes out of the box. But I'm quite happy with, uh, with these results that I got right here. And uh, you can save the profile and have it always kick in every time you, um, you load your PC. It'll always set those overclock uh, settings for you, right? So that's pretty much uh, what this um, software has to offer. Very easy to use, intuitive, and uh, it gives you that little bit more um, that you can squeeze out of this card. Now, when it comes to the gaming benchmarks, of course, I'm looking for the RTX, um, you know, uh, to do some DXR ray tracing. I want those those uh, those shadows. I want those reflections. I want the real time, um, you know, effects for that eye candy when I'm playing Battlefield 5. Now, on the NVIDIA side, the graphics automatically optimally set things up like this. Okay, so on the optimal graphics settings, I'm getting 88 frames per second there on uh, 2K. 1440p monitor and then of course you can adjust the graphics accordingly to bump up those frames per second or you can really push it and enable DXR on and uh, that will decrease the frames per second a little bit but it'll give you some more eye candy similarly if you run things on ultra with strange brigade here with um, a 1440p monitor you can see here graphics are superb and average frames per second are higher on the Vulkan API. I prefer to use that than the DirectX 12 with this game, right? It varies on the type of game that you play. It's up to you if you want to use uh, one API versus the other. Um, you know, some don't offer that. The Final Fantasy uh, benchmark here gave me a score of 6,017 and then overclocked. It gave me a little bit higher the boost there on the score of 6133. On Far Cry 5, you can see here, and pause at any time this, this video, by the way, so you can see slowly at your pace what the average frames per second that I'm getting on Ultra, running at a 4K, 2K, 1080p, so that you get a, a sense on how it would perform on, on your machine, on, uh, on your display, I should say. Okay, so there you have it uh, with overclocked um, results as well, right? And overclocked meaning using that... Um, EVGA X1 Precision software. Now the Thief utility here, um, I left it on very high, the preset, and uh, there's your average frames per second, again, running it at uh, 1440p, and uh, 1080p, you get uh, obviously a higher frames per second on a smaller resolution, and uh, overclocking it, you might get a boost uh, of anywhere between 5 to 10 frames per second, okay? So that's the additional boost that I got when I overclocked the memory. Um, 3D Mark has this new Port Royal benchmark now that tests that uh, that ray tracing capability on it, and here are the results that I got with it at defaults and overclocked. So you can compare that to a 2070 graphics card that is running at defaults, and you can see how well it performed when I overclocked it. So not bad at all. On Fire Strike, you can see here the results that I got as well in 3D Mark and how it compares to previous generation cards. Again, this one outperforming those. And here on Time Spy, you can see again the score that I got with it running at default and overclocked. Overclocked, I got 8185, as you can see right there. And here is how it compares to other um, graphics cards as well. So you get a good idea um, from those different tests. Another uh, benchmark that I did was V-Ray, okay, which does some rendering and ray tracing there. You can see the uh, results, basically a minute and 20 seconds to complete compared to these other graphics cards which were hovering around the same uh, time frame more or less uh, but beat it by a couple decimals as you can see. The performance test 9.0 gave me a benchmark on this 3D um, benchmark that it did of 14795 which really did, did better than a 2070 so I was quite impressed uh, and, and, and uh, I gotta admit this is a great graphics card lots of cooling very smooth Playing multiplayer here, as you can see on Battlefield 5, I'm getting awesome frames per second with no lag. I'm able to really do well uh, with my squad here and get far, right? Get really, really far in this game because everything is real time, everything is quick. There's no lag, and uh, well, it's it's a it's a it's a pleasure to to play this game when you know that the graphics have been optimally set up and. Um, and they keep updating the drivers to increase and, and, and squeeze out a little bit more performance. So I'd like to thank EVJ for providing the card. Comment below. Let me know what you think about this new 2060, which I think is the sweet spot. I'll add the latest pricing for it below in the description. And again, 
Thank you for watching.